front of me, I have everything I'm going to need to complete this painting. So I've got my canvas and I'm going to be painting in portrait today. But if you want to, you can always turn your canvas around and paint in landscape instead. It's totally up to you. I've got here three different size paintbrushes. I have a sort of square flat end brush, a smaller one and then a teeny tiny one. But I always say that brushes are very personal preference. So feel free to have an experiment with your brush sizes if you want to. I've then got some kitchen towel to dab my brushes on, a little glass of water, my palette for doing all my mixing and I've got my paint colours in the dishes of my palette. So as you can see here, I have got the primary colours. So I've got red, blue, yellow, some white paint and some black paint. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start by doing our background. So this is going to be from the top of our canvas all the way down to the bottom. And this is essentially going to be our sky and our sunset. Now, I always find that skies are really relaxing to paint because you don't have to worry about being too precise. You can go more abstract with your painting if you want to. You can go a little bit more stylized and remember that there are so many different tones and shapes and textures in the sky. So if you have a streak within your painting, don't worry about it too much. Let it sort of be and just figure out what you want to do as you go along, because whenever you look at the sky, you see all sorts of different tones in there. So I'm going to start by picking up my bigger brush. I'm just going to dip it in the water just to loosen up the bristles slightly. And then moving over to my palette, I'm just going to mix up my first shade. So this is going to be for the top section of our sky. So it's going to be the slightly darker tone. So what I'm going to do is pick up a couple of scoops of my blue paint. I'm just moving over to a different dish on my palette. And what I want to do to this blue is I just want to add a little bit of white. So white paint makes the paint a little bit more opaque, so slightly less see-through. So I always quite like adding a little bit of the white in there just as a base. What I'm then going to do is I'm just going to focus this colour. As soon as you're happy with yours, you can do the same on the top section of my sky. So this is the fun bit. Like I mentioned, the sky has so many different textures and tones within it. So all we're gonna do is just start painting this all along this top section. And what I like to do is I just like to drag my hand backwards and forwards all the way along that top section of the canvas, making sure you're covering it all up. And if you are painting on a canvas, you can always just carefully paint the sides as well just so that the paint carries on around the tops and the sides and the bottom just so the whole thing looks nice and finished and completed when you're finished and you don't have to frame it so if you are using a canvas you can do this if you are painting on a bit of card or some paper then obviously you don't have to so i bring this shade down a little bit because what we're going to do is we're then going to blend our next tone up into it just to get that nice gradient effect with our sky. So I'm just bringing it down slightly further. Again, if you want to, you can wrap it around the sides as well. It's just quite nice to get lost in your brush strokes. It's nice and relaxing once you get into it. Try not to overthink it too much. Like I mentioned, we are painting the sky, so it's a very forgiving subject to paint. What we're going to do now is we're just going to lighten up this shade that we just used for the top of our sky. So I like to pick a little bit up, pop it in a different dish on my palette or just a spare area of your palette. And then I'm going to add a little bit more white to it and give it a good mix. We want a sort of a shade or two shades lighter than our first colour. And if you mix this up next to your first one, you can kind of see the difference there. I would also say if you're using quite thick acrylic paint, it's nice to add a drop of water into your mixture as you go, just to keep the paint nice and fluid while you're using it. So as soon as you're happy with your lighter shade of blue, we're going to move back over to our canvas and we're going to focus this underneath our previous colour. So doing exactly the same thing, just covering up all that background of the canvas, sweeping your 
hand backwards or forwards right along, bringing it down, I would say an inch and a half maybe, depending how big your canvas is. And I'm just leaving a tiny little gap, very small gap between the two shades for now. Just make sure most of your paint is off your brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back in and fill in that little gap that we've just left. But I find that it's a lot easier to create a nice gradient within the two shades when you haven't got too much paint on your brush. So as soon as you feel like you haven't got too much on your brush, you can then just very gently drag the bristles backwards and forwards on top of that gap. And I like to sort of overlap this new shade with my previous shade. And I'm just dragging my hand down, going back up over it. It just helps you create a little bit of a gradient between those two colors. And remember, if you want to, you can always go ahead and pick up some of your first colour again and you can go over that top section with it and just blend it into that next shade. It's nice just to add the different layers of paint on top of each other. You're almost mixing them on the canvas. And then as soon as you're happy, we're going to move on to the next section. So what we want to do now is we want to blend this blue down into more of a sort of whitey, very pastel blue before we go down into our sunset shades. So I would just recommend giving a brush a little wash in your water. I like giving the bristles a tap on the base just to make sure all the paint is off the bristles. You can then just give it a little dry on your kitchen towel as well, just so the bristles aren't too wet. What we're going to do now is we're just going to pick up some pure white paint. Now we want to work fairly quickly because we want to do this while the paint on our canvas is still wet. So what I like to do with this white is just do exactly the same as what I did with my previous shade. So I paint it underneath that light blue, just like a stripe, almost along the middle section of your canvas. Again, just working that white paint into the canvas making sure it's all covered. And then when you feel like you haven't got as much paint on your brush, you can do exactly the same thing again with the gap. So we're just gonna very gently start overlapping this gap. And we're gonna drag the paintbrush up into that previous blue. You see it going almost like a little bit hazy looking. Now, if you feel like your brush is a little bit dry, a little tip I have is just dipping the very top of it in the water, dabbing it off, and then going back into your canvas. You can just work, almost using just the water on the bristles, you can sort of blend that water in to the paint that's underneath, and it just gives it that nice ombre feel. And literally all I'm doing is really just picking up water, dabbing it off and just using the water to overlap the paint. As you can see, I'm getting a few streaks in my painting because of the water and the bristles. But I actually really like it because, like I said, the sky has got so many streaks and movement within it. That it's quite nice just to sort of leave them in there. Again, just picking up that water and just using the water to help the paint blend just by going backwards and forwards with my paintbrush. Again, I'm liking those streaks, so I'm just bringing it up a little bit more. As soon as you're happy with that section of your sky, I would just give your brush another wash in your water. 
We're now going to move on to our sunset shade. So I want to start by making a nice pastel pale pink colour. So I'm just picking up a little bit of my white paint and then to this I'm just going to start adding a tiny little bit of red. You can just mix the red in with the white until you're happy with the shade that you've created. Then as soon as you're happy with your light pink, we're just gonna do exactly the same thing again that we've been doing for the rest of the painting. So I'm just focusing this pink underneath where that white was. Again, I'm bringing it down a little bit, really working it into the canvas with backwards and forwards motions. Painting the sides. And then when I feel like a lot of my paint is worked into the canvas, I'm then just going to very gently drag it up into that white. So I'm overlapping the white now. So my white is acting as my base and I'm just dragging this paintbrush right across the top of it, bringing it up to meet the blue. And the lovely thing about mixing pinks and blues together is they sort of go a little bit of a violet shade. So they work quite well when they're mixed together, especially for the sunset colours. I would say when you get to the bit where you're blending, the trick is, is just using a really light touch. You only really want the very tip of the bristles to touch the canvas. And because your paint should still be wet underneath, it should help you blend it. And as soon as you're happy with that pink shade, we're just going to mix up our final sunset colour. So again, I'm just going to start with a little scoop of white as my base. I'm going to add some more red, a little bit more red to it this time and mix it up so I have a slightly brighter tone of pink. And then to this, I'm going to add a tiny little bit of yellow. Now the yellow should just give it more of an orangey peach tone. It's up to you how much yellow you want to add. You might want it more on the peach side, or you might want it more on the orange side. If you want it more orangey, you just need to add more yellow. So as soon as you're happy with your brighter shade, we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. You've probably got the hang of it now. We're just gonna use this color at the very base of our canvas. Again, just getting most of the paint off your brush working it onto the canvas and then when you feel like you've got most of it off you can then gently just start overlapping that lighter pink that we applied before What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mix up a final shade. So I'm just going to use some of this colour that I just applied to the canvas. And this time I'm going to add some more yellow to it just to give it more of an orange hue, just because I really want to warm up the bottom section of my canvas. And I'm just going to overlap it with this colour I've already applied to the canvas. And you can be quite sort of free with this movement. You don't have to be too neat. It's quite nice if you see a few streaks in there and it looks a little bit uneven because this is where our sun is going to sit. So we want it to be quite warm and hot around where the sun is setting. And again, if ever you feel like you need to, just add a tiny bit of water to your brush, dab it off and then go back in to help blend it. You can also experiment if you want with picking up some of your previous shades. So I'm picking up some of the lighter shade and I'm just blending that in, adding layers on top of this section here. So you start to see all these different stripes sort of forming within your sunset. I just think the sky is a lovely, lovely element to paint and you can be really experimental with it. So I would always suggest, don't be, don't be scared of it, just experiment. If you don't like something, you can always cover it back up. So just go for it. So I'm just adding a few little stripes and swoops of this sort of peachy tone that I've got on my brush. I'm just adding it in that section of the blue, just to give hints of like highlight and reflection, almost like 
these clouds that their highlights are bouncing off. I'm just picking up a little bit more white, tiny little bit, and I'm just adding a little pop of this white highlight where the sort of blue of the sky meets the sunset shades. So I'm just taking a little bit of white and I'm just adding it into that section there. And I'm being quite sort of messy with my paintbrush. You don't want to be too neat. Just to add a few little pops of highlight. And I think the trick is knowing when to stop. So I think sometimes it's a good idea just to put down the paintbrush, take a step back and then look at something else and then have a look and see if you're happy. What we're going to do now is just give this a moment to dry before we move on to painting in our sun. So while we're leaving it to dry, we can actually mix up the colour for our sun. So it's really up to you what colour you want to do. You might want to go for a very bright yellow. You might want to go for a bright coral shade. You might want to go for white. It's totally up to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for more of a sort of pastel yellow tone for my sun. So I'm just going to mix up that colour now. So I'm just going to wash off my big brush. And if you want to, you might just want to give your water a refresh as well before we move on to the sun. So taking my bigger brush, I'm just going to pick up some pure white paint. Make sure you don't get any blue in there. <laughs> and then I'm just going to start adding a little bit of yellow to it and giving it a good mix until I'm happy with the shade for my sun. So it's up to you which paintbrush you'd like to use to paint in your sun, which is why I like having a couple of different options on standby. I'm actually just going to use the same brush that I've been using. And what I'm going to do is just decide where on my canvas I want my sun to be. Now I'm going to focus mine on my lower third of the canvas, just where the warmer colours are, as if it's about to set. So all I'm going to do is sort of find that middle. And with this brush, I like to just push the bristles down. And then you can carefully twist the handle all the way around. Just take your time. And it just helps you create this sort of round shape which you can then go in and amend if you want to. So it just gives you a very sort of abstract shape. And then if you want to, you can switch to a smaller brush and just work in that paint. You can make it a little bit bigger if you want to. I quite like being quite thick with my paint when it comes to painting in the sun. What I then like to do, just using the smaller brush in the same shade, is I just like to pick up this colour and then just start adding a few sort of dashes and streaks in this bottom part of the sky. In fact, if you want to, what you can slowly start to do is just add little sort of streaks and waves over on top of that sun, just to make it look a little bit more hazy. nice as well if you want to you can always pick up some of your previous sunset shades and sort of work that back in so I'm just picking up this pink shade that I had and overlapping it so just feel free to have an experiment with your sky I'm always just smudging out that circle at the bottom. I 
I'm now just going to lighten up a little corner of my yellow shade just by using a little bit more white. And I might just add a small highlight in my sun using this lighter shade. So you can just sort of dab the paint or stipple it into the sun. You can add any more sort of swoops in your sky. Remember if your brush is getting a bit dry, just add that water back in and then go back in with that more fluid consistency of paint just to blend it in and add those streaks. Now taking that same colour, I'm just going to map out the very base of my canvas. A few sort of triangle like shapes, only quite small. I want them to be quite jagged. But these are going to be the outlines of our mountains, which are in the foreground. And we're going to do these with a darker shade of paint. But I just like to map them out with a lighter shade before I do them. So as you can see, I'm being quite free and jagged with my movements. What we're going to do now is just move on to making the colour for our mountains. So I've just picked up some of my black paint. And I'm going to add in a big scoop of white and give it a good mix. I want to make a slightly more grey tone. What I'm then going to do is start adding some blue to this colour. Now it's really up to you what colour mountains you want to do. You might just want to stick to pure black. You might want to leave out the mountains completely. You might want to go a bit abstract and do a colour. I'm just making a sort of grey blue shade. Keeping it quite light by adding in that white. Remember if you don't like a colour you can always leave it and mix up a new colour. And then as soon as you're happy with your shade you can just go ahead and fill in this whole area down here where our mountains are and just keep your hand movements quite rugged just so we get those nice jagged lines I'm just sort of pushing the bristles of the brush down to help me create quite a jagged look you can be really thick with your paint as well it's quite nice to see a bit of texture on there And if you're painting on a canvas, you might want to paint in the base as well as you go. Now, without washing off my brush, I'm just going to dash off any of my excess grey. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of pure white on the tip of my brush, dash off any excess and I'm just going to add a little pop of this white, very subtle highlight just to some of these mountains. I'm just mixing it in with the paint underneath. Again, I'm just not overthinking this, I'm being quite rugged with my movements. And as a last touch, I'm just going to dash off any excess on my kitchen towel. I'm just picking up a little bit of this yellow that I had for my son. And I'm just going to add a tiny little fleck of this yellow on some of the mountains. Just to show the sun reflecting on the top slightly.
once you've completed your mountains. I'm just taking a black ballpoint pen and I'm just going to draw in two tiny little elongated M shapes just to symbolize two birds flying low in the distance of my sunset.